What if pairing your workout with the right kind of heat could raise your VO to max speed recovery and make every session count more without adding extra time? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster. Today, we're examining how infrared heat, especially near infrared, changes the way you perform, adapt, and recover when you train. I'm Alara Sky. We'll keep this practical and clear what near, mid, and far infrared actually do in your body, why most commercial saunas miss the mark, and how a simple near-infrared setup can deliver meaningful results for performance and recovery. Infrared light sits just beyond visible red and is grouped by wavelength into near, mid, and far infrared. Those bands behave differently in tissue, so the type you use matters. Near infrared carries the most impact for training. Mid infrared provides gentle subsurface warmth. Far infrared mostly heats the skin and drives sweating. Near infrared penetrates deeply, up to several inches, reaching muscle, blood vessels, and mitochondria. It triggers photobiomodulation by interacting with cytochrome C oxidase, raising ATP output while prompting nitric oxide release. The result is improved cellular energy, better circulation, and support for tissue repair after stress. Mid-infrared sits between the two, but doesn't drive mitochondrial signaling the way near-infrared does. Far-infrared has the longest wavelengths and lowest energy. It stays near the surface, increases temperature, and promotes sweating. That's relaxing and useful for fluid elimination, but it's primarily thermal. Most commercial saunas rely on far-infrared, which limits training effects. Add heat to exercise, and you multiply adaptive signals. In an infrared sauna, mechanical and thermal stress combine. Over time, this supports endurance by improving oxygen transport, easing cardiovascular strain, and enhancing thermoregulation. The outcome is measurable gains in VO2 max and a longer time to exhaustion. Strength and hypertrophy pathways respond as well. Heat exposure stimulates heat shock proteins and MTOR, signals linked to repair and muscle building. Sessions also influence hormones such as growth hormone, prolactin, noradrenaline, and beta endorphins, which affect performance, motivation, and recovery readiness. Recovery is where many notice the difference first. Infrared heat increases blood flow to stressed tissues, helping clear byproducts like lactate and inflammatory cytokines while delivering oxygen and nutrients for regeneration. Heat shock proteins stabilize threatened cells, reducing soreness so you can return to full capacity sooner. There are broader benefits. Sweat-driven detoxification combines the effects of passive heat with the metabolic activation of movement, easing the burden on your system. Near-infrared also modulates immune activity by signaling through mitochondria in immune cells, supporting balanced inflammatory responses. For body composition goals, Infrared sessions raise metabolic rate and energy expenditure during and shortly after exposure. A single session can approximate the calorie burn of moderate intensity exercise. On the nervous system side, as core temperature rises, cortisol tends to drop, tension eases, and parasympathetic tone comes forward, useful for stress regulation between workouts. Equipment choice is critical. Many units marketed as infrared focus on far infrared or include weak near infrared LEDs. The marketing often lists near infrared benefits without delivering the necessary intensity. What matters is irradiance, the power delivered per surface area, measured in milliwatts per square centimeter, because it determines whether you reach a therapeutic dose. Another concern is electromagnetic fields. Even products labeled low EMF may suppress magnetic fields while leaving high electric fields. That exposure can trigger stress responses with regular use. To avoid these issues, a high irradiance incandescent near-infrared sauna remains the most reliable option for training goals. Incandescent near-infrared delivers a broad, natural spectrum that includes the therapeutic wavelengths often filtered out by narrow-band LEDs. The very heat range historically dismissed as inefficiency is the range your mitochondria use to initiate repair. For training and recovery, that spectrum is an advantage, not a drawback. This approach is not new. 
incandescent sauna therapy dates back more than a century, including early 20th century sanitariums led by figures like Dr. John Harvey Kellogg. Today, it's accessible at home. You need an enclosed space that holds temperatures above about 100 degrees Fahrenheit and fixtures that shield you from direct bulb contact. A common setup uses four 250-watt red-filtered incandescent bulbs. At roughly 24 inches, that array delivers about 30 milliwatts per square centimeter, similar to the near-infrared irradiance of sunlight. A 20 to 30 minute session provides roughly 36 to 54 joules, which sits squarely in recommended photobiomodulation ranges for tissue effects. You can also scale locally. If you're not ready for full body sessions, a single red filtered incandescent bulb can target stubborn areas, headaches, muscle knots, neuropathic discomfort, or persistent skin issues. Many expand to a full array after first experiencing localized improvement in circulation and pain. Safety keeps the gains sustainable. Start with shorter sessions and lower intensity, then build as you adapt. Hydrate before, during, and after. Add electrolytes if you sweat heavily or go longer. Watch for dizziness, nausea, headache, or unusual fatigue. Signals to cool down and rest. Keep sessions focused. Most people do best with 20 to 30 minutes of infrared training rather than pushing longer. If you're using lamps, rotate your body so exposure is even and skin doesn't overheat in one spot. These practices help you stay consistent without setbacks. A quick FAQ recap helps you get moving. Infrared heat training means pairing exercise with infrared exposure, often inside a sauna. Yes, you can train in that environment. It amplifies cardiovascular, muscular, and metabolic responses, and can regulate stress hormones more efficiently than exercise alone. Near-infrared outperforms other bands for performance and recovery because it drives mitochondrial signaling. Saunas are not all the same. Many lack adequate near-infrared intensity. And yes, you can build a near-infrared setup at home with four 250-watt red-filtered bulbs in a safe enclosure. Your challenge today is simple. Identify one way to implement near-infrared in your next week of training. Either schedule two 20 to 30 minute exercise sessions inside a near-infrared setup, hydrated, rotating for even exposure, or begin with one localized bulb session for a problem area, noting how your energy, soreness, or time to exhaustion changes. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.